For a history you won't forget and an experience you'll always remember, visit the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History with engaging educational programs, lectures, entertainment, and enlightening exhibits. You'll gain valuable insight and be motivated to inform others. The Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, located in the heart of Midtown Detroit. For more information or to schedule a tour, visit thewright.org. Thirty-two years ago, Tony Radford came into my office to pitch an idea. He thought it would be great if for Black History Month we had an exhibit of local African American artists. I knew this wasn't being done other places and I said, absolutely, let's do it. Even that first year, we ran into trouble with the fire marshal for having too many people in the Cropsey Auditorium. And it was definitely a need uh, for representation of African Americans in art. And Tony expanded that from the visual art to literary art and musical art. The exposure he gave so many individuals that probably would not have had that opportunity is just really awesome. When I think about Tony, I think about a very generous spirit who's been really willing to share his own personal creativity and his connections in the art community. When I look at where we are today with him as our artist in residence, I think he has been quietly networking on our behalf for years. He saw the opportunity and he ran with it. I saw the Nouveau recently that if you're thinking about African-American art, you needed to visit the Central Library. I think that's pretty powerful. What Tony has done has brought the entire Indianapolis community art created by artists of color that they didn't have anyplace else. It's clearly been an opportunity for him to cultivate something that was missing in our city. Tony Rafford um, Anthony Rafford, T. Rad. He's just a wonderful individual. I'm, I'm honored to have had an opportunity to work with him over these years. It was a beautiful thing. I wouldn't trade it for anything. He's just been a stand-up guy. My name is um, Anthony Radford. Um, I am a self-taught grassroots visual artist. Um, I've been into art seriously for the last 33 years. Um, produced a show, came up with an idea for an exhibit, Meet the Artists, to um, represent local and regional artists in the state. Um, here in Indianapolis, there's not a lot of places to show. Um, Expo was being, back in the day, was the primary place for African-American artists to show. I got really off in the mart in the 80s, early 80s. Um, I exhibited a piece out at the fairground, and to my surprise, won first, second place, and a $300 check, so now I'm an artist, wow. you know. I was like, I'm an artist, I just, this is what I want to do, you know. Um, but the reality of that dream will hit you sooner or later, you know. Um, it, it wasn't like that, you know. Um, and I was green and didn't know a lot of things, so along that 33-year journey, I have um, learned a lot, done a lot, created a lot, um, done a lot with, with my art, as good and bad, you know. Um, and <clears throat> had a lot of doors closed in my face, but I'm the type, you know, um, as I said, I'm a grassroots artist, so I didn't go to school. What type of art? I'm a, <clears throat> I've come to, my title now is Mixed Media Assemblage Artist. You know, I, I struggle with titles through most of them. Talk, talk to us about what that title means. <laughs> well, it, it, I explained it not too long ago. You know, Mixed Media Artist is somebody that works with more than one medium. Um, 
I was into um, found object art. You know, I just take anything that I find or uh, most people look at as junk and I create art. A assemblage artist is somebody that actually takes that and assemblages it, you know, using more than one art form. So um, that's my title, Mixed Media Assemblage Artist. Um, so um, train, no, don't boast on being a trained artist. But along the way, I have learned so much about art and especially black artists. What would you need you to use bones as your tool? I was at a craft store one day and I was at the mall. I was with my mother. We stopped by the craft store. I bought a bunch of beads and string and started doing jewelry, you know, hanging it on my bedroom wall, just something to do. My mother thought it was fantastic. Everybody came in. She was like my manager. She was selling stuff off the wall like crazy, you know. So I bought up another batch. They let me sell it at the library during lunch break and it was selling. Didn't have no money at uh, Black Expo picnic one day. Me and the partner I was like, I got some of this old jewelry, man. Let's see, we can sell a couple of pieces, get us something to eat. We wound up selling every piece but three pieces. He had an arm full and I had an arm full. So I said, I got something here. So <clears throat> one lady had a small bone she gave me and wanted me to incorporate it in her jewelry piece. I did that. So I started asking people, save your small bones for me. You know, I was gonna start incorporating them in jewelry. But the bones kept getting bigger. I was getting ham bones, all kind of, you know, uh, goat bones, all kind of bones, you know. So I just started reconstructing. First I had to find out how to get the grease and all the mural and all that stuff out of them. Somebody said, boy, you work at the library, get a book. So I found a book and it told me how to get the grease and, and um, till they turn white and I would stain them, paint them and, and made all kind of crafty things with them. And I did that one picture survival. So that's how I started working with bones. And that's how I came up with the concept of doing some pieces, um, chess pieces with, with bones. And then that led on into me not being able to keep paying this guy to make these wooden boards for me to go out and do what I do, find some junk, what people call secondhand stores and get a coffee table, end table, painting in my own squares and designing the whole table. Um, and that gave me the nickname back then, Mr. Bones, you know, everybody's calling me Bones, you know. And, <laughs> and the, the first time um, I showed a piece was my mentor was in the show at the Ricardo, Joe Holiday. And he thought it was just absolutely phenomenal, man. You got, and that's when he told me, he, he said, man, I like what you're doing. Keep, he said, don't stop, keep doing what you're doing. And that was like 91. That was a couple of years after I'd started Meet the Artist. And from that point on, you know, I remember those words, don't stop, keep, keep putting us on point, you know, making avenues for us. And that's kind of what I've been, been doing with the art scene here, man. And um, I, you know, I've gotten some awards and accolades. I've gotten invited places I probably never would have gotten invited to. I've gotten to travel, form three arts groups, um, one of which uh, lately uh, we are, and we've been together five years and doing some great things. You know, a lot of the mur murals that you were showing me, um, well, everybody in those murals, I think well, a couple of people um, are in my group. But I know all of them's been through Meet the Artist. So these are murals that are downtown Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and these are individuals who are, are creating these murals to support the Black Lives Matter movement, right? right? Mm -hmm. Recognizing that, how important is it to have black art as part of our expression? It was great, and I'm glad it, it happened. You know, and a lot of um, artists got the opportunity to do a mural and I've been downtown taking a lot of pictures but what I want the art world to understand is you know I felt that we kind of used because you know there's 365 days in a year and um, only time we, we get invited to do something it's, you know that crisis happened you know and then you know Black History Month. What is Meet the Artist? Meet the Artist is an art exhibit um, for African American artists, local, regional. Um, it was just back then, it started out with me wanting to show my work, not having enough work. And 
going to the folks say, well, let's do something for African-American artists. Give them another home to, to express itself. We got, you know, y'all got media coverage, this is, and I sold them that idea. So now it's, it's a venue for, for <clears throat> artists to, to um, get the exposure that they need, because we're going to give you that exposure, you know. We're going to give you a nice reception. All you got to do is bring your business card and talk to people and, and network. Meet the Artist is also, like I said, a networking venue. You know, I tell people, man, if you got something going on, bring it, pass it out, or give it, you know, we have an MC, we'll have him announce it. So it's a networking place where artists come together, our patrons, and I'm trying to educate the general public on, on you know, why purchasing a black piece of artwork is an issue. Um, also where artists can network with other artists that don't know each other. You know, so that's what Meet the Artist is. Um, it also became a home for um, designers, um, poets, authors, um, African dancers or dancers. You know, we 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 featured everything at Meet the Artist, um, and most of these you know places didn't have the fashion show has become a big thing now. Um, and we started that probably seven years after. The first show, I had a couple of designers that were in the show and was looking at their stuff and I was like, man, I want to see how this stuff moves and looks on people. Y'all want to put together a fashion show, a mini fashion show, and show some of this great work y'all got? They said, yes. Yeah. We did it, took it to the committee, we did it, and it was a hit. So all the people you work with throughout your career as an artist, how do you see that helping the black community? But art in general, art's always helped the black community. Arts, artists are recorders of our history. You know, in the 60s, the riots, artists created. You know, every era, now, the protest, artists are in high demand. You know, so for me, artists have always been a, a, a big part of our community because we are the recorders of our history. You know, you just study art and look back at everything that happened in that era, an artist is in there somewhere, a visual artist. But out of that, we're the lowest of the art forms because people have not been educated. And the true meaning of starving artists, that's us, you know. Um, but a true artist, it ain't about the money or the fame. It's it's about educating people. It's about, you know, continuing doing what you love to do or your God-given talent, you know. Um, so for me, it's, it's, been a, it's been a blessing because I've been able to do a lot that I probably wouldn't have been able to do if I hadn't had taken this art thing a little more serious and, you know, and is it, is it real art? Is this, you know, the critics, is this real art? It is for me. It is for anybody who likes it. You know, what is real art? What, you know, um, for me, art is in the eye of the beholder, you know, no matter how many millions it's worth or, or you know, somebody created it. God gave somebody the brilliance to paint this picture just exactly like it is. Somebody gave this artist, the knowledge to be able to take found materials and make sense out of it, you know. So for me, um, I just love doing what I'm doing. I'm, I just love to be in a uh, situation that I've been in to help other artists or uh, work with kids, um, travel, meet people, you know. Um, so for me, it's, it's, it's going to be there till I'm gone.